Okay, let's talk about government contractors. And there are some differences between government contractors and just the generic brand of contractor. A lot of it's the same, but there are a few things that made this a separate category. So examples would be, um, many of you have heard of Lockheed Martin, Booz Allen, Boeing, uh, and then there's special categories of government contractors. So 8A small business, um, service disabled, veteran owned, women owned, minority owned. There's all kinds of different categories where if you fit a certain category, you can pursue government business based upon your capabilities and the category that you're in. So some of the strengths of this. Now this is being recorded in September of 2012. So a lot can change because there's a lot of change going on in government right now. But government work can be very lucrative if you have the right contract vehicle or the right partners. Because once you are in, you are set for a few years as long as you perform. And so let's say you're a service disabled veteran owned company. That means that um, while you were a veteran, you were injured in some way, you have a skill, you created a company, um, there are contracts that go out from the government that say this is specifically for a service disabled veteran owned company. So this is a great opportunity because once you get your foot in the door, then you can prove yourself and you can gain more business. Some of the weaknesses of government contracting is it's contingent upon politics. So whenever there's a major change in the presidential elections or um, for uh, state and local, or if there's changes in local politics, um, that changes initiatives and it happens very frequently. All of us in government are very aware of this. So overnight, you can suddenly become irrelevant if your offering is based upon a particular uh, initiative that only one political leaning would appreciate or want to go for. So um, it can be limiting also if you don't have the right contract vehicle. I know a lot of people that are trying to get government business where the perfect opportunity will come out and then they'll look and they'll see that they aren't an 8A small business. And so they have to either disregard the opportunity or go partner with an 8A business in order to, to get that. Uh, weaknesses is it's a saturated market in some areas. So let's say in the D.C. area, which includes Virginia and Maryland, um, so many people have decided to be government contractors. And so there's a lot of competition for each opportunity that comes out of people that have the same skills and abilities. So it can be highly um, competitive and saturated markets. The good thing though is if you're not in that saturated market, you might be able to come in with lower costs because for example, in the DC area, people expect higher salaries. I mean, it costs a lot more to live here. They're, they get it from their other jobs. So they bid higher than maybe someone that's bidding from Iowa. Opportunities. There are so many opportunities. You can prime a contract. You can be a subcontractor. Your whole strategy could be to be a subcontractor to other larger contractors, just doing pieces of work here and there. Um, you can have surprising wins if you write a good proposal. If you follow all the criteria, um, you can win it. Now, the problem is, is if you win it, and then just because you wrote a good proposal, it's a whole different thing to perform within the culture and environment. Um, but the opportunities are there. Threats. Right now, September 2012, one of the threats is sequestration. So they're going through the process of deciding what's relevant and what's irrelevant. And if the, the uh, part of government and some government roles are taken away that existed, that you supported, that could mean major cutbacks for your contract. Um, another issue is you may win a contract, and that might be amazing, but then the government might not get enough funding. And so they don't get enough funding. It doesn't matter if the ceiling on the contract is $5 million. They only have enough funding for 200000 That's all the work you're getting. Um, there can also be major contract vehicle delays, which is really tough, especially for smaller government contractors, because they're trying to keep the employees that they want to work on that contract, but yet there's no work to bill them to. And so it can create layoffs, but then when the work starts, then they don't have the right talent because the people that were laid off went on to other jobs. So a lot to think about here, lots of strengths, opportunities, and weaknesses, and threats. I would suggest that if you are a government contractor, that you also find business in um, the private sector. 
so that you can make sure that you have business coming in from corporations and from government.